Good morning and welcome to the Kimmel Bay vlog where we're carrying on looking through the hundred essential readings through the Bible. Change. Change isn't easy to manage when things are uncertain, very difficult to cope with. Disappointment when things don't turn out the way we do. It's good to have things to rely on when that happens. Our passage today is a whole book actually, the whole book of Malachi. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, the last of the, the prophets, and uh, we're looking at chapters one to four, so it's going to be a bit of a paper chase, but maybe it's not the reading that you would choose. It's definitely not an easy read. For those of you that like dates, it was uh, written, the prophet, uh, 400 years before Jesus was born, before Nehemiah, remember him, became the governor of Israel, and after Haggai, and Zechariah prophesied. You don't need to remember that to get the message. That's fine. And yet after the prophecy of these two men, Haggai and Zechariah, when they encouraged the people to build the temple at Jerusalem, disillusionment had set in. Things weren't going the way they were hoping. Things were getting a bit sloppy. Times were hard and the promised prosperity hadn't materialised. Ooh, sounds familiar. And the people, as I said, began to let things go. And Malachi, the prophet, his name means messenger. So whether that was his real name or whether it was the name given to him by his followers, it really, he does have a message. He really rails against unfaithfulness and hypocrisy. My, what a man and what a uh, uh, thrill it must have been to hear him preach. And he rails against three particular areas where the uh, Hebrews were, were just failing. They were getting sloppy. One was their relationship with God. They thought God had let them down. Things aren't as you promised, you prophets. And they weren't treating holy things with respect. The sacrifices that was the system of worship in those days. They were just letting things ride and just going through the motions and how easy it is to become jaded when things get a bit hard. And the prophet says, remember who you are. He says, I've loved you. You're special. Look at the Edomites, the nation alongside that don't know me. They've been destroyed, but they're up and they're building. Come on, he says, remember where you've come from. Remember and just give God time. Give God time. How important to do that to give God attention, just to listen to what he would say. There's a, a lovely quote from David Attenborough the other day in The Times saying that if we could spend just 10 minutes out in nature, maybe now during lockdown we can hear a bit more. No cars passing or not many, anyhow. Just listening to nature, the many things we would hear. And who knows, just giving time to God, we would hear him speak to us. Relationship with God and then relationship with family and partners. I'm afraid the Hebrews had become indifferent and callous towards their relationship to each other. And older men were cruelly discarding their, their aged wives for attractive younger women, multiple. And really, Malachi just speaks out against this. Now, I'm not saying that there or never will be breakdown in relationships. I'm not saying that. And we need to be very compassionate and understanding toward those whose uh, maybe uh, lives are very different to our own. But we need to reinforce maybe our relationship with those we love, connect with those we love under lockdown. Again, give time, a phone call, a letter, making up, forgiving. And then the attitude to money, relationship with God, the relationship with family. And then the attitude to money, Malachi speaks out about the, the tithing, the t tithes in those days, they were, they were like the income tax. The income tax that the people had to pay for the building and the upkeep of the temple, the, the paying of the temple staff, and they just let this fall too. Everything was getting sloppy. I remember reading a funny um, comment by a Bible teacher. Remember in the, uh, uh, Matthew's Gospel where the Pharisees uh, ask Jesus about should we give uh, tithes to, to Caesar, really wanting to trip him up uh, in his words. 
And the Lord Jesus asks for a coin and he says, whose image and inscription is this? And of course, it was the image of Caesar, the inscription of Caesar. And one Bible teacher trying to encourage his uh, church to give more said, Jesus said, whose mingy subscription is this? Mm, maybe not exactly right, but I think I know what he was trying to say. But looking on the positive side, when things get a bit hard, when we're disappointed, there is something we can do. There are things we can trust in. Malachi 3 and verse 6, I, the Lord, do not change. Though we're un living in uncertain times, though we still don't know what might happen. And that brings anxiety. We know that the Lord is still the same. His love for us. We don't change either. We're still fickle. We're still up and down our emotions. And yet we can hang, if you like, our faith, our hope on a God who never changes. A God who is certain. A creation that's certain. One author says, as we roll in orbit around our burning sun, we know that nothing's certain. But it's our awe and our wonder that keeps us interested in the great mystery. I, the Lord, do not change. And then there's a fascinating verse just finishing in chapter 3, verse 16. Isn't that amazing that it should have that number? Remember John 3, 16, for God so loved the world? Well, this is Malachi 3, 16. Here we go. Then those who feared the Lord talked with one another communed together, encouraged each other, and the Lord listened and heard, promising that when we give God time, when we encourage each other and allow him into our conversation and into our meetings and into our study, the Lord pays special attention. Isn't that an amazing verse? A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who fear the Lord and honoured his name and they will be mine in the day when I make up my treasured possession. Just giving God time, no works, nothing we can do to merit, but just opening our heart and loving God and trusting him. And then really Malachi do you know he begins with such an encourage uh, ends with such an encouraging word? Israel always had the tremendous hope that Messiah was coming, the promised one, virgin will conceive and bear a son, and Malachi begin ends his prophecy saying, looks forward to a new age. He says, I'm going to send my messenger before you to prepare the way for the Messiah. And with Malachi. The voice of the Old Testament prophecy falls silent. 400 years between Malachi and Matthew and 400 years after Malachi preached, God sent one last prophet fulfilling this promise, John the Baptist, to herald the coming of the Messiah. The final message of Malachi is even though things are changes around and it's difficult and there's disappointment, I, the Lord, don't change. If we fear him and open to him, he will make us his treasured possession and Messiah is coming. The final message, if you like, of Malachi, this messenger of God, is that things can only get better. And that's a wonderful message for today.